Well, good morning. Monday morning, bright and early, or at least early. I uh, had three episodes all ready to edit last week, and I left the camera on by mistake and overwrit, overwrote. I overwrote all three of them. So there wasn't anything to show you from last week. I had some amazing footage of a full moon and all kinds of stuff. So now I'm trying to remember all the things I talked about. And maybe I'll think of a couple of them as I'm going down to Swedesboro, New Jersey. So i got to remember to shut the camera off every time. And when it turns itself on, automatically I have to shut it off again. That's my trick. So here we go. That this is the upside. This is not the place where I pick my tractor up. This is the place where I hook up to trailers, or one of the places. So that's why it looks busier around here. Talk to you soon. Okay, I've been sitting here in the dark watching the sun come up, and I was going to wait until I saw the lights go off because it looks better, I guess. I've sat here quite a few times now watching the sun come up. It's a great place to sit and ponder things. Swedesboro, New Jersey. I like this area. There was a huge snowstorm here one time when I was sitting here. That was fun. The driving wasn't as fun, but watching the snow was fun. I've been thinking about the things I tried to tell you last week before I erased it all, and I'm not sure that it would have been good in the context of what I'm thinking about this week. At the risk of sounding overly pessimistic and cynical, <laughs> and I've been accused of that before, I feel like what we really need to know is how the world actually works need to know how the universe works and then everything else has to fit into that context because if you think about it you can't eat without destroying things you can't survive without doing harm my mantra is always do no harm take no shit but if you think about it it's impossible to exist without harming other things plants and animals. Even if you are a vegan and you eat monocrops, there are a lot of animals destroyed producing your plants. And it's a, it's a painful reality. And I think you need to start from that baseline that you can't live a cruelty-free life no matter how hard you try. The only, <laughs> I mean, it's sad to think about, but the only way you could do that really is just to out, to off yourself. You wouldn't really have any other way to live without other creatures, other species being harmed. Agent Smith told Morpheus that humanity resembles a cancer because it just keeps consuming without restraint until there isn't any more room, no more resources. And I sometimes wonder if humanity isn't more destructive than cancer. I doubt that individual cancer cells compete against each other the way individual humans compete against each other. I picture a blob of cancer with its individual cells cooperating with each other better than, than human individuals do. So if the big picture for humanity is that we leave destruction in our wake and leave the earth in worse shape than it was, <laughs> not hard to make that case, at least we could cooperate with each other as we're doing it. But it, it doesn't work that way. Every human individual is motivated to make things work for himself or herself, themselves. Every human has an agenda 
that's selfish if you if you want to be blunt and even parents a mother's love is supposed to be the the truest but a mother's love is self-interest because the mother is trying to get her own genetic material into the future and a father's love also is self-interest if you think about it because the prime directive for our species is to get into the future that's why we prioritize not only eating and drinking but also sex we're trying to get our genetic material into the future and then we're trying to raise our children in a way that they'll get their genetic material into the future and then our legacy is assured our legacy of destruction so I told you I warned you it's a little bit cynical and pessimistic a lot cynical and pessimistic but you need the context if you're going to think about being a non-toxic human. Basically, I'm saying you can't be a, a non-toxic human. And unless you offer yourself, the best you can hope for is to be as not toxic, non-toxic as possible. It would be great if the human species as a whole could leave the earth in a better place than it found it. Like if each of us as individuals could leave the earth and, and look around before we leave and say, yeah, it's better than when I got here. And I helped with that. It hasn't been that way for many generations, but that would be a great goal for humanity. You could make the case that you were as non-toxic as possible if you did that and some of the youtubers I watch and follow and subscribe to they say they're adding value as youtubers they're adding value and that's why they prosper that's why they live in abundance it's because they are adding value to other humans and I think that's a great goal if you want to be a non-toxic human and leave the world better than you found it. Try to help people understand how the world works. Try to help people with their values. I, I don't think there's anything more important than values. Forming our values. I'm a teacher, so I've always felt that way about teaching. Helping people form their own values is the prime directive. But it's also my own directive. I want my own values to be as good as possible. And what business do I have teaching others if my own house isn't in order? As best as it's possible to get it in order. I wouldn't pretend that my house is in order, but I would say that I've tried to get my house as much in order as I can. In my own worldview, there isn't anything more important than relationships, learning how to do relationships, learning how you as an individual impact other people and hopefully for the good. So I'm thinking to myself, to be non-toxic, I want to be a good parent, a good teacher, a good friend, a good lover. I want to leave everyone better than I found them. And that's not always easy. Being nice isn't the way to do it. Because it's fake. I'd say that even if you offend people, or just challenge them to think differently than they have been thinking, to challenge them on their bullshit, maybe, that's the best thing you can do for each other. That's what we can all do for each other can challenge each other and, and help each other grow. What I notice a lot though, what got me on this tangent this morning is, and it isn't a tangent, what got me on this topic this morning is when I watch people, even parents with their children, there's a lot of competition. And it isn't enough for a lot of people to run the race faster than you're running it. Like the, I like the, the analogy of the bear. If there's a bear, figuratively speaking, who's ready to eat us, 
we can look around at each other and say, I don't have to outrun the bear, I only have to outrun you. And okay, so that's the human race, if you want to think about life as a race. And we're trying to get ahead of each other, we're trying to run as quickly as we can. But if you think about it, you don't even have to outrun the other person if you cripple them, hamstring them, then the bear doesn't even have to run. And, you know, there's that cynical, but a lot of people run the race that way. They don't think about running their best race and being as fast as they can. They think about running with their elbows out or using whips and chains and other devices of destruction, trying to trying to impede and hamper each other. Torpedoes, sabotage, and if you sabotage the other contestants, you don't have to run at all. And the bear doesn't have to run at all. And thinking about the world that way, in my head I kept hearing, that's how it works, and people really need to know how it works. Whether it's pleasant or not, we need to know how it works. And so if you don't want to hamstring other people and impede them or cripple them so the bear can get them more easily, if you really wish to leave everyone around you better than when you found them, you can teach them to run well and teach them not to, to hurt each other. I don't know how things work in the natural order. I know that there isn't enough for every species to just run amok and, and reproduce without predators, for example, or without uh, limitations on how much food there is. There are limits. The system we live in ha has limits, but I'm. that's a big picture to think about think about your own consumption that way, you know that there have to be limits on you individually as well as on the collective. So a lot of a lot of my thinking this morning has been, well, you do the best you can. You just do the best you can to be non-toxic. I want my life to be, I want my legacy to be that I have done no harm and taken no shit and I think that taking no shit is a big part of what I've set up here as far as context because it looks to me like having other people is sort of built in, baked in and expected and so if you can figure out how to do as little harm as possible you're, you're doing better than most people for me, I want to run this race well, for my, for my own sake. I want my progeny to, to run well. I want them to have good values. I want them to form their own values, but in a way that doesn't harm and doesn't allow them or others to be exploited, that they can stick up for other people too who might be exploited. And in the system we live in, everyone is being exploited. Workers are being exploited. The bottom half more than the top half. The bottom 90% much more than the top 10%. That's why I think all the bottom 90% should stick together instead of fighting with each other so much. There's an analogy that if the plane is going down and there's a lack of oxygen in the cabin, you should put your own mask on when they drop before you assist others. And I think that's part of my mantra. I think I do have to take care of myself as an individual. I have to be healthy, I have to be fit, or I won't be able to help anyone else. And so I do have to be selfish in that way. I have to consider my own needs. But as a male, as a heterosexual male, I want my relationships with women, whether it be daughters or sisters or 
or friends or lovers, but especially with regard to lovers, I don't want to be exploitative. I don't want to leave people feeling as though I took something from them. I'd rather leave them feeling that I gave them something and that I took nothing as opposed to mutual exploitation, which a lot of relationships seem to be. And for that to happen, I need to acknowledge my own masculinity. I need to acknowledge my own needs. I can't be fake and use those covert contracts where nice guys act like they think the other person wants them to act with the implicit, with the unspoken understanding that then the other people will meet their needs. And I would rather just put it out there, even if it's ugly. This is what I am, this is who I am, this is what I need, and and just go that way on that basis, being real. If it offends, move on. Some people are delighted when they bump into someone who's raw and authentic. And other people are scared to death. They think, how, how could we even survive if the world were so honest and blunt? Our whole society operates on the basis of inauthenticity. If you said everything you were thinking, it's like the Jim Carrey movie, Liar, Liar. Nothing would work if you, if you just put it all out there. If Wonder Woman's rope of truth were around all of us, what, what would happen then? But I think, for myself, I want to be non-toxic by being authentic. Whether that polarizes or not. Some of the things I said last week that got erased were polarizing, very polarizing. I was talking about politics, and I was talking about open relationships, and I will, and religion, too. And I will continue to to step on those topics, but I w I'm glad to get to this topic before I do anything with the other topics. And you'll be able to see this as long as I notice if my webcam turns on by mistake, by itself, on the way home. Because as soon as I, if I see that and turn it off again, then it won't write over everything I'm doing right now. It is shaping up to be a beautiful spring day, and this is a great place to sit and ponder it. Sit and ponder our navels as we look at the beauty around us. I may turn the camera on a couple times on the way home too, just to show you things. Especially if there is a huge raging accident. I've seen some horrible accidents in the last couple of weeks. I don't know if you want to see that or not, but it's kind of fascinating. It makes me much more aware of my own mortality. But otherwise, I'll just leave you here and try to make sure the camera doesn't turn itself on on the way home. To further flesh out an idea I had earlier, I just saw an advertisement, a billboard, for hospice care. And it said, what did it say? Care for them, comfort for you. So it's not aimed at the people who need hospice care, obviously. They're probably not able to get their own. But it's interesting that being selfish is baked in to the universe. The universe doesn't coddle us. The universe is not codependent. The universe faces us with our greatest fears relentlessly. And I believe that it's all for our good. And if you think about being selfish as, as a bad thing, I think you, you can be selfish without being exploitative or neglectful or abusive. I think I'm thinking particularly of women. When women take care of their own needs first, it's like putting on that oxygen mask and then helping others. But even if you don't help others, you need to breathe. And I think women forget to breathe sometimes. 
and some men too so you know if you're like that if you're a man and you're like that don't forget to breathe yourself what I'm thinking is if you're a man who is say <laughs> speaking hypothetically not about myself but um, someone I've met recently if you are hypothetically with a man who doesn't want to share you but you've said right up front it has to be that way I'm not going to have a relationship with anyone who isn't willing to be ethically non-monogamous and if that man says well you're you're so important to me that I'm willing to give up what I want for your sake I'd say that's a red flag because both people should be selfish enough to make sure that what they consider deal breakers aren't present in the in the agreement. So I'd say he'd have to learn to either I I'd, I'd say ideally he'd have to learn to love sharing her. And I can tell you that's possible. It may not happen instantly, so maybe he'll think of it as a work in progress and he'll expect of himself that eventually he'll love sharing her but otherwise if he doesn't learn he'll end up bringing resentment to their relationship even though she was very front that you know that was the that was the deal that had to be the deal for her and i would i would not easily entertain an argument from you if you if you comment that it was wrong for her to say that I would say as long as she's up front with it it's good for her to to, to stick to her guns to say look this is the deal and, and you agreed to this and I'm not gonna tiptoe around your insecurities and I don't expect you to tiptoe around my insecurities. Now, maybe every once in a while you can cut me some slack, but that is codependency. And so that's that was a thought I thought I thought I thought went with the previous thought. So I was I was hoping you can see. And it's been a, a few hours since I had those other thoughts. So. I already got back from Sweetsboro and dropped my backhaul and then I went to Mountville which is really close to Conestoga where our yard is I picked up an empty trailer and I am almost back home with the empty trailer I don't know if they're gonna have me get another empty trailer or not but that's probably the last word of the day even though it's not a bright sunny day you can see how much greener things are in just a few days and it, I guess it's been almost a week or more since I put a video up because I erased everything. The grass is growing. You can see there are a lot of a lot a lot more to come, but I love subdued light days. I like the way things look when there's cloud cover. I think the colors are more vivid somehow. I'm not really close to the colors right now. This is more of a green section, but um, up ahead there are lots of flowers. There's a flower shop and a lot of beauty. So over this next week, I'll probably show you some of that. Stay tuned. Scott Peterson, you should come visit me.